So there it is, there's my hatch um, frame rather, my hatch frame. Um, I've got to confess I'm a little bit disappointed. I ordered some, um, some brass bar and it's not brass, it's aluminium painted gold. Damn it. So I've got a feeling I'm going to be taking these inlays out and replacing them with some proper brass. And uh, but it was it was on Amazon and it was a late night purchase for next day delivery. And I bought it last night thinking, oh great, I can use that tomorrow. Um, and uh, it, I thought it was too good to be true, and it was. But there you go. That's all right, isn't it? If I make a load more of those, there's, I've got to sand it and varnish it and all, but I think that's all right. I'll leave that to set overnight. So you'll notice I was using Gorilla Glue um, to assemble it all, uh, but I also use Mitofast, which is basically just super glue, it's cyanoacrylate. And I use a kicker, which is trichloroethane, to uh, make it go off quickly. Uh, I also use panel pins, but they are um, brass panel pins, if in case you're wondering. Where I can't get the pins, I use the super glue. So I use that, um, I'll leave that overnight and um, come back to it tomorrow, I suspect. Jack's back, and Jack's gonna help me today do some prep on these panels that we're gonna paint. So, what we're gonna do, Jack, we're gonna sand all these panels, we're gonna be wearing PPE, and we're gonna be using the random orbital sander. These pads, look, come in different grades. So 120 is quite coarse, 120 is quite coarse, and then 150 is, um, a bit more fine, 180 is more fine, 240 is more fine, 320 is more fine, and 400 is like super fine. Put the goggles on. Okay. We're going to sand this all nice and smooth. So you just press that button. If it goes through the paint to the wood, don't worry too much because we're going to be putting lots more paint on this. The important thing is to get it smooth. If you're wondering about some of our history, by the way, you should go over to the YouTube channel Breaking Waves News. The channel releases regular videos about sailing channels and tells a bit of the story of their background. Last week they featured us and the amazing sailing wave rover, so click the link to watch that video, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel and watch their other cool videos as well. The timber that we've got is this mahogany tongue and groove um, and we got loads of it off eBay, I said this in last week's episode and it was enough to do like an entire huge lounge came out of somebody's house and it's beautiful, just reclaimed wood, I'm all for reclaiming and what have you where possible. Uh, but for making our frames and our be beams and stuff in the ceiling, uh, sorry in the deck head and around the port lights and stuff, we need to trim it down. We need to get rid of the tongue on that side. That's a tongue and that's a groove. So normally when you're putting floorboards together, you can fit them together and they, they go together really nicely. Yeah, the tongue goes in the groove. Now we don't need that. Um, so we need to trim these down. And the measurements that I've taken are that this is, how many millimetres is that? That's six centimetres or 60 millimetres. And these ones are, 50. We've got loads outside and that one annoyingly is a slightly different shade so we won't use that. Jack's nipped in for a sandwich which is fine because I'm going to be using the circular saw and I don't really want bits flying around with him in here. Um, not till he's a little bit older anyway. So I've sorted out my timber. I'm trying to be as economical as possible because I want to leave as much left over for other projects as possible including we might even use this for the entire floor of the boat if we've got enough. In terms of the one I made yesterday the one I made yesterday was okay, but I think I could do it better. Uh, and I've had some other ideas about that brass joiner piece, which I'm not gonna put in at the moment, but I'm gonna put in at a later date. Gloves would probably be a good idea. Why am I not doing this on a table saw, you may ask? It's a very good question. I would love one, but I'm not gonna go and buy one at this stage because we'd only have to sell it before we move aboard anyway. That's very quick for you. 
We've got our angle set up now, exactly, you've got the idea. So this is a Japanese woodworking saw, which is my preferred tool of choice for this kind of thing. This isn't a tool tutorial, so I'm not going to go into that. This is a, a mitre block, and you can cut straight, perfectly straight lines, or you can cut them on perfect 45 degrees either way. It's getting a little bit old and chattery, this one, but it's still okay. Yeah. And uh, what would be handy actually, we'll probably screw this down because it will make a bit of a difference. Now the only thing to bear in mind with this using the Japanese saw is that the saw blade isn't that much longer than the, the mitre block. So if you do this, it will hit. So you've kind of got a restrict, you're a little bit restricted in your movement there, but otherwise it will do the job just fine. Can you please use the straight edge and put a square down there please? A what? Put a, put, put a line all the way across. Okay, yeah. You've got to hold that with that hand and get it. It yep. mustn't be, look, it mustn't be like that or like okay. that. It's got to be perfectly. And if you That's push down, this. yeah. So slide that up to the line, uh, a bit further back that way to, give, uh, to count for the thickness of the pencil. Okay, good, 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 good. Perfect. But what's important is that that line there is exactly correct. Okay, hold that, I'll grab that there, grab that there and you need your thumb on this really, on the piece of wood, just that's it, it's there, good. That's it. Hey, there you go, so we've got a lovely 45 degree on one side and flip it over a lovely 45 degree on the other side so we've done all 12 of these so we've now got 12 of these uh, sections so we can do three hatches and basically what happens look Jack yeah. that sits up like that like that okay these go on like this and this goes on like this and we have to clamp them all together can you have an oval shaped hatch? no <laughs> I'm not doing oval shaped hatches now no that's not happening and that band it's got like a ratchet strap type affair on the end here and actually means look look don't, don't mess with it because it will go ping and fall apart. We're going to glue this one and then we'll quickly go in for some lunch. That's it. Doesn't need to be crazy. There we are. It's okay. Dripping. Yeah, it's already it's dripping. dripping. Don't let it drip on your shoes. It didn't drip on my shoes. Yeah. It, won't, uh, it won't hurt you anyway. It's only wood glue. Very gently, very slowly. That's it. Pull it tighter. Keep pulling. Keep pulling and then make sure that's that's it you can let go and then we'll adjust these adjust them make sure that's all nice and firm and is being held together nicely good Jack's got bored of cutting mitres and I don't blame him but um, I guess that's uh, part of his homeschooling woodwork lesson for today we spent a good few hours in the workshop learning about mitres and Japanese woodworking saws and all that kind of thing. So what I've done now is I've got to cut the, the flat pieces to go on the underneath. I've got to cut a whole load of those. I've screwed my mitre block down and I've set up a end stop so that I can I can cut them all pretty much, well, they should be identical. Let's have a go. See, if I do put that there, grab another one and see if I can do an identical one. Like this. So I'm gonna move my tea, although a bit of mahogany in my tea is never a bad thing. I should point out by the way that if we weren't using reclaimed timbers I wouldn't be using mahogany um, because I'd want to use something a lot more sustainable and environmentally friendly uh, so please don't think that I've gone out and bought new you know factory um, recently felled mahogany this is all reclaimed
I was um, I was trying to be an arse of the smart variety. I have heard of these smart arses, and I thought I'd have a go at being one uh, and assemble both halves of the frame simultaneously. Um, uh, it was a cunning plan that went disastrously wrong, so I ended up having to take the whole flipping thing apart and got covered in in glue. Yesterday I was having real trouble with these corner mitres. Um, trying to get these, you know, that, that's okay. Um, and uh, it's really quite difficult to do because I'm working with uh, hand tools and with an absolutely terrible mitre block and I don't have a, ter a chop saw. I'd love one, but I just can't justify spending the money because I'm probably gonna only use it on, well, I've got all the windows in the pilot house to do. I've got the windows in the four pieces. It might be worth buying one, but uh, anyway, it is what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm working with what I've got for now and I might buy one, but uh, what I'm doing, what I've done to try and help myself out is make a bit of a jig. So this, um, these parts are for this and the way it will work is I'll put the corners in um, and then I can radius the outside and the inside. And I think that'll actually look really really pretty once I've got these corners in place make sure the grain matches, uh, goes the direction I want it to of course um, so yeah I think that will actually look really nice um, so but to stop to, to kind of help it clamp and stay there while it while the glue's setting um, I'm going to stick it in this wooden frame um, and I did a, I did that yesterday and of course what happened was it glued itself to the frame so I'm going to use today some silicon released spray I've also got some candle wax which I might try if that doesn't work I mean it, it wasn't a big it wasn't a big drama because you just prise it up with a chisel and it's fine it's got some glue stuck on the bottom that you sand off but um, trying to make life easy for myself let's see what happens I will say these parts are, a, you know, a really tight fit. I'm using this. This Gorilla Glue is fine because I'm using it indoors. Um, but the better stuff is the brown stuff that foams, and I have ordered some of that, and it should be here tomorrow. I was, I had ordered it for this project, but uh, Amazon Prime promising me uh, immediate fast delivery and everything have failed me on this occasion. Um, so I'll, uh, I'm gonna write them an angry letter that's okay somebody just said to me on uh, one of the YouTube comments Andy you need to stop apologizing for your work you're working with a, a stone and a stick compared to the high-tech equipment a lot of the boys use and that's true um, I've got an okay little workshop with some okay little tools but it's not I haven't you know there are guys out there on YouTube doing CNC programming and, and all that kind of stuff and and of course they're getting amazing results um, uh, so I think I do all right with my stick and my stone. I'm going to leave that to set now and when I come back what I will find is that the silicon spray was useless and it's stuck to the board anyway. What do you reckon? It's been an hour or so and um, by all accounts this glue is supposed to be clamp time of 30 minutes so I'm pushing my luck. And you'll be pleased to know, I've just uh, inquired about uh, a table saw and a, um, you know, a chop saw, mitre saw, and a table saw rather, um, to uh, make this whole process a bit easier. It's okay, it's just not quite set, is it? The joints are okay. I've just I've just taken it out a bit early, which um, you know is fairly typical of me, really. But ain't that what the learning curve's all about? Um, like I say, trying not to spend money on buying tools that I'm only going to use for this project and then sell when we move aboard. But yeah, that's okay. We'll we'll do that. So these are okay, but I wasn't particularly happy with the mitre joints in some of the corners. Some of them were fine, but some of them were not. Um, I, I don't know if I just said this, but I have actually just uh, been on Facebook Marketplace and I think I'm going to buy a mitre saw and a table saw to make the rest of the hatches because there's tons more to do. Um, anyway, what I've done is I've set up a jiggy jig thing. I didn't film that, 
but I basically set up a square with some big um, pieces of timber and a, a straight edge and I've routed a groove over the top of the um, over the top of each one of the mitres and I'm going to inlay a tiny little piece of veneer this is some rock maple I think I'm not using a pencil to mark it because the graphite will obviously um, uh, be difficult to get out of the veneer this is where the Gucci boys have their uh, laser printers to do this for them their laser laser and cutters and all of that kind of stuff CNC malarkey cut to the end of this and I'll show you the finished product so there you go there's still um, there's still more work to do uh, I'm just going to pop some oil on just to pop the grain out um, I'm not varnishing them just yet because there's still more bits and pieces to add I've actually bought some um, some fly mosquito mesh and I'm going to make some built-in mosquito net frames uh, that with a little lip on the inside here and a little shelf for it to sit on um, and it will it will kind of slide up inside the hatch and then turn and down so if you want to if you have to get out from inside quickly you just pop the mosquito net out uh, but it can't fall in because it'll be reasonably sturdy and sitting on a sitting on a little ledge um, uh, so much so, I think I'm going to build them just strong enough. Oh, look at that! That's stunning. Some of this wood's lovely. Just strong enough so that um, we all know that you should never keep your hatches open when people are on deck. It's a, it's kind of um, a no-no. But we also know it happens from time to time, and accidents do happen, and people step down an open hatch, and that can be really, really nasty. And having a fairly sturdy frame with a supported mosquito net on the inside of the hatch that allows air through that's not designed to be stood on but might break your fall if you did step through an open hatch it's um, sort of uh, design against stupidity which in my world is uh, quite a good thing what do you reckon i want to see how that looks on camera well that looks awesome doesn't it to Melody to test fit the woodwork so on the way we thought we would try out our new tender. We've had loads of small dinghies over the years but for our main tender for Melody we wanted something big enough to carry the whole family and shopping supplies and with an engine powerful enough to go fairly fast. Dad's best mate Chris had this Avon 3.1 meter with an almost new 9.9 .9 horsepower engine and that setup is perfect for us.
we've actually got the wheels down which of course increase, increases an awful lot of drag uh, but that's a good thing because it means that jack can't go too far and of acts like stabilizers and, uh, and an auto brake so jack can get used to um, steering and maneuvering without managing to go too far So we've popped back to the boat because uh, I want to put all these panels up and test fit the hatch around. Um, and I'm slightly annoyed with myself because I gave these a last final spray coat of the white paint before we left. And then I had lunch and, um, and what I should have done is left the panels at home while we went out for our dinghy ride. And uh, I didn't, I put them in the back of the car and um, one or two of the pieces have got marked because the paint wasn't fully 100% set, which is really annoying, but it doesn't really matter because once th these are coming down again to have um, the wooden trim glued on, and then once the wooden trim is glued and pinned to various different panels, uh, I will then give it a final coat of white and the epiphanes or whatever varnish or polyester or whatever I put on the the wood um, so it's not the end of the world I'm just I was just had a vision of it all looking amazing today and it's not gonna look amazing today but that's okay right let's put the panels up frames and they're not going to go in so I'm really annoyed with myself um, but it means I can I can take them home and cut them down I think um, that's really disappointing but it's just the way boat work goes sometimes uh, oh well uh, I've still got the windows to do sorry the surrounds to do for the port lights so I was going to be taking these home to cut, varnish them and finish them. And I guess part of that varnishing and finishing will mean actually taking um, half of, taking 10 mil, I reckon. I'll make, I'll make some marks on them and uh, cutting them down a bit. Can you tell I'm annoyed with myself? It's the way it goes. my piece of uh, foam that I've just cut out and I've marked it forward aft starboard port so I can take this out and then I can take this home how the heck did I get that so wrong 
and that's the issue with working on a boat in a yard that's an hour and a half away is if you do things on the boat you're doing them in less than perfect situations with hand tools and no bench um, so the job isn't as good as if you did it in a workshop but then if you do it in the workshop with a bench and big tools you're not on the boat and stuff doesn't always go exactly to plan um, so with that in mind uh, if you've got this far into the episode one thing we are considering doing is when we finish the work the metal work on the underneath of the keel which necessitates lifting the boat up and down a lot which is easy in this yard we are considering having the boat moved closer to home which will make it a lot easier to nip backwards and forwards and check that things fit and the reason we didn't do that at the start of the project is as I've said this yard's particularly good for being able to lift the boat up work on underneath it put it back down and the yards near where we live aren't so good at that but after that's done we'll only need to lift it once more and that'll be to put it in the water anyway uh, a lot's happened in this episode ending in a bit of a failure uh, but it's not too bad and i'm sure you'll agree it'll look awesome when it's finished uh, thank you very very much for watching um, please remember to leave us a comment and like and subscribe and all of that stuff and uh, we'll see you next week on sailing melody